Okay, um, so I'm here to talk about personal branding and uh, actually what is personal branding, um, why do we need personal branding, and hopefully give you somehow direction to brand yourself. Well, what do you think this is? Like in it's a pig? Is a pig? Piggy bank? Piggy bank? Piggy bank? It's a toy. Speak it's a piggy bank balloon. Mm. And a piggy bank balloon. <laughs> so, unless each one of you have a different. A balloon converted to a piggy, to piggy bank. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, kind of a, so, how about this one? Balloon. Uh, Air balloon. Dog. Shape a dog. Balloon. Shape a dog. Shape balloon. Shape a dog. <laughs> <laughs> but what shape does it giraffe. actually? Yeah. A giraffe or a dog? Giraffe. <laughs> Long neck. Oh. Yeah, this is giraffe. Uh, this is okay. definitely a uh, giraffe. giraffe. Better version of giraffe. What I'm trying to <laughs> say here is that we want to make a picture of ourselves to other people that they. It, they actually define who we are. Like, they don't think that I'm a giraffe or I'm a dog. I am a pig or I'm a, I don't know, a bunny. So, and, and also define exactly what skills that I have. For example, as a dog, I might be very loyal. But as a giraffe, I have a long neck that can see far, far away, right? So. What I'm trying to say is that when you introduce yourself at the beginning, saying I'm an IT professional, that doesn't give me anything. Because there are so many IT professionals that do so many things that the same as you do. So the, the first rule of personal branding is to actually make sure the other people see you the way you see yourself and the way you want to be seen. In um, Be Your Own Brand, written by um, David um, McNally and Cole Speak, they say your brand is a perception or actually uh, emotion maintained by someone other than you. That's really important, maintained by someone other than you. So that describes the total experience that they have actually from relationship with you. So you might think that you are really good at what you're doing, but your brand says otherwise. You need to make sure that you present your brand. A great personal brand I needs to define who you are. Needs to define your marketplace, your positioning. Needs to actually show that what who is your target audience? Who am I actually aiming to attract to myself? So to make sure that you in order to appeal to the target audience that you're trying to appeal to, you need to create a good personal brand. Um, I'd like to tell you a little bit about my story, how I become a business coach and consultant. Uh, it might actually give you some insight as a newcomer that um, how you can actually manage your career now that you're in Canada. I. Um, loved biomechanical engineer. I loved um, actually designing, but my major was fluid mechanical engineering. So not much designing and not much biomechanical. When I got to Canada, I thought that this is a great chance for me to change career because I had the base, right? I I studied some design at university. I studied some um, mechanical, <laughs> basically, background I had. So I said, 
I'm gonna go to a medical device company and I'm gonna be a designer. <laughs> this is what I wanna do. And the first thing that came, I, I actually sent only five resume. I just want to enter the good company, not just any company. So at that time, Amico, which is still is a good company in medical device, had an opening for an inspector, quality control inspector. That's an entry level job for a quality control. I joined them and uh, to my surprise, they had a sister company that they actually, after a month, they hired me as a supervisor of quality because they were a startup. And not long after that, I become the head of engineering and quality control uh, for the same company because I proved that I can do design. So this actually continued for 10 years. For 10 years, I was in program management, product development, and managerial roles, but I felt that I'm not fitting in within the company. Like I, with, not within the company, within the management, the upper management. For sure, there were some cultural issues, but, or cultural differences, but the, I, <laughs> Whatever what it was it, it actually pushed me to go to Rotman. At Rotman, I learned who am I. <laughs> I learned really what are my strengths, what I want to be, and uh, how do I see myself in, let's say, 10 years, 20 years. So I finished, uh, I actually got my AB MBA and I, uh, created this career for myself as a business coach and consultant because I had the knowledge, I had the experience, and I was really passionate about it. The way that I actually uh, couldn't just stop working because it just made me alive. So my question to you guys is that what attributes, what the skills, you can weave together for your brand. How could you define your brand knowing your skills, your passion, your, um, the, what you want to be actually? Um, benefits of personal branding is that you, you lead more. So we say, we don't say only for an entrepreneur, like, like an entrepreneur or consultant or a coach needs uh, personal branding. We all need personal branding because as a person new in this country, you need to make yourself visible you need to lead people to you to make sure that they hire you, they like you, they get excited about having you, they know what value you can bring to their team. So the benefit is that you can lead people to yourself. The other thing is that you can win more because you actually are in a negotiation every day in life, right? So whatever we do is kind of a trade with our husband, with our um, kids, with our, <laughs> I don't know, employer. It's always a negotiation. So if you know what value they see in you, you're more confident to stand on your ground and Talk about what you want to do, what you want to be, and not be afraid. Don't feel the fear. And if you do these two, you definitely are going to earn more. Because whoever has a greater or better personal branding, they have 
10% or 25% more income than the other ones. So how do we want to define your brand? Uh, personal branding defines success as a self-packaging. So now you need to present yourself as a package. Like, like I'm a, I have a product, how am I gonna sell it? That's my package, right? So to self-package yourself or start packaging yourself, you need to be self-aware. What does that mean to you? Does it mean that I need to make sure that I'm doing the things right? No. You need to be self-aware and make sure that people see you, see you the way that you want to be seen. I have clients that tell me that I have organizational skills. He comes to the mock interview for a, a phone mock interview with me. He brings one a small page, a scrap page, that on the like corner he put two, three points for himself. So how am I gonna think that he has organizational skills? He needed to bring his resume, he needed to bring the notes that they practiced together, lots of things he could have bring, not that <laughs> piece of paper for sure. Or I have another client that thinks that he is actually self-aware. He, he knows that credibility is the key for him to keep his clients or attract his clients. So he comes to me and he says, how can I build a more credible brand? So self-awareness is, is the first thing that you need to be aware of, but then the other thing that you need to think of is that I don't know, even you don't know how many different skills and capabilities and um, basically abilities you have inside. So you need to show that to people that, and don't assume that everybody knows who you are, everybody knows that what you're good at. So when the right time comes, you need to show to them that this is what I can offer. This is the value that I can bring to the table. So self-awareness is very important. And to give it a test, ask one of your friend, a brutal friend, <laughs> and ask them, how do you see me? How do you really see me? Do I look the same to you as I think I am? And then you kind of get an idea if you're in a right path or not. So another thing that you need in your package is passion. You need to be passionate about what you're doing. When I started my career, at first I was thinking like, they, they shouldn't pay me because I'm enjoying it too much. <laughs> I'm having fun too much. I should not get paid for that. And I couldn't stop working. I wouldn't, I, I didn't think that I'm working. So you, we all all passionate about so many things. But one thing is that thing that we don't stop unless the job is done, right? So you need to find your passion. The next one is your strengths. What are your strengths? You, you really need to find um, your top strengths. Like personal branding is where you're like taking inventory of your um, branding assets. And when define it when these uh, actually asset inter, uh, intersect with each other. Um, so when I actually got introduced to Clifton Strengths Finder, I was thinking to myself that this is another task that tells you that okay you're friendly, you're a hard worker, but no. I found that my 
top five strengths. Responsibility, activator, um, input, strategic thinker, and learner. Putting all these together created my job. Because as a business consultant, I have to activate people. As a career coach, I have to activate people. I have to have a strategic mind. And I have to actually learn every day because I'm a consultant, right? I, I, I need to know new technologies every day. So this actually gives me an, a boost in my confidence that, okay, I'm actually working from my confidence, like my, my top strengths. I'm not actually struggling to learn this skill or to improve it. So you need to learn your strengths and find out what, what are the, the best skills and attributes that you can actually uh, brand for yourself. And then you need to find your core values and beliefs. I never work with a company that somehow is not environmental free, uh, um, friendly. I, I wouldn't help them to make any product. I wouldn't work or collaborate with a system that is hierarchical. I am an equality person <laughs> fan, and I like egalitarian uh, cultures. So you need to stand for your values, for your beliefs, and say no when the job is not actually within your beliefs or your values. And then put all these together, and when you come to Piton or somewhere else, make a story. Because the world wants to hear a proof living story, right? You are the living proof of your story. And you are saying whatever, you actually are saying the things that you, you've done, you're going to do. So tell your story the way that it's attention grabbing. It's memorable and it's relevant. Like if I would say, if I'm coming to Piton, I wouldn't say I'm, I love dancing, which I love, <laughs> because it's not relevant. How, are you, how that is going to help me find a job or, or a client or a, a company, right? I know that I'm very passionate about, I don't know, swimming. But it has to be relevant. It has to add a value to me and to those people that are hearing it. So your story has to be memorable so people don't forget you. You are not an IT professional the same as all other people that I've seen in my life. And one thing that I really recommend you to do is influence others. People love to get to, to become those one of those influencers, right? We all love to uh, actually connect with those people. So why not you become an influencer? But to in order to be a good influencer, you have to have three skills. You need to be consistent. You need to be very trustworthy. And you need to actually, so, okay, <laughs> one is um, consistent, one is trustworthy, and uh, the other one would be healthy. I forgot the, the third one. But, okay, maybe if I describe it, I, it comes. What's that? Responsible? Reliant? Reliant. <laughs> Communication? Communication? Transparent? Transparent. <laughs> it wasn't those. <laughs> okay, so, but the main important thing is consistency. 
because consistency actually um, makes you reliable, makes you trustworthy, makes you authentic. Okay, so authenticity is, is the key. You cannot fake it. People will find out after a while that you're not what you say. So authenticity is the third <laughs> element here. And then make relationships. Connect as many to, to as many people as you can. Um, Elena Muller in the book Coffee, Lunch Coffee says, with every single part of my um, being, uh, I believe that networking is the key to any success. But I tell you something. I have more than 15 years experience in Canada. With every single part of my being, I tell you one thing. If you want to find a job, just be authentic. Be yourself. Be confident. Just show them that you can do the job. You can learn the BI in one month. And they know that. So they just want to fit. They just want somebody to be confident, that has the I can do attitude. Like, I say I can do it, no matter what. And believe me, you get the job. So soft skills is the key for you to find the job. And then when you're making these relationships, make sure that it's not just for taking or grabbing and using other people. Deepen it, deepen these relationships. They should mean to you. So then they, they know when, when, the, when the time comes, um, you're there for the job, they call you, they find you, they invest in you. So you need to make sure that um, you, you don't build relationship just for the sake of uh, networking, right? Because we know, if everybody knows these days, networking is very important. Your network is who you know.